रिमूव दीज थिंग्स फ्रॉम योर वेबसाइट इमीजिएटली नंबर वन बैड हेडलाइंस इट्स ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर एंड द कॉम्पिटिशन टू रैंक हाई इन एस इज फेयर्स सो इफ यू आर नॉट ऑप्टिमाइजिंग योर हेडलाइंस फॉर बेटर एस एंड बेटर विजिबिलिटी एंड बेटर इंट्रैक्शन फ्रॉम यूजर्स देन यू आर गोन लूज दैट बैटल In the advertising world it's very common to say that once you've written your headline you've spent 50 cents on the dollar and when it comes to SEO I would rate it at 80% because if you can't get users to click on your titles then they won't reach your website so it doesn't matter how great your content is if your title isn't great so you should be spending some time optimizing your titles for SEO and also for user clickability thankfully there's a very easy solution to this install the all in one SEO plugin and the free version also includes a headline analyzer All you have to do is go to every single post you have on your site, use the headline analyzer, and it'll give you detailed instructions on how to write better headlines based on the keywords your article has, based on the keywords that you have set inside All in One SEO, and based on emotional intelligence of users, and also based on user behavior. What kind of words and power words and emotional words and what kind of formats work in the search results that get users to click? So make sure to use the headline analyzer in All in One SEO to optimize your headlines, and you'll thank me later. The next thing to remove from your website are complicated gigantic menus. Now I personally get it. A few years ago mega menus was all the trend. Everybody wanted to have images, videos and tons and tons of different things stuffed inside of their menus for some reason because I believe users expected to find things in the menu. But now things have changed. More and more people prefer to search for things rather than finding things from a menu. And if I have to find out any website on the internet that still uses very gigantic menus, they're mostly e-commerce sites and specifically Amazon because that's one place that they have too many items to list. But it's very likely that your website does not have so many different options or categories to choose from that you stuff your menu. So simplifying your menu is more important and more importantly, you should be as adding the most important links from your website on your menu so if you're a contractor who does landscaping maybe just adding a contact form button on the menu makes the most sense so don't add a lot of random stuff on your menus just add the most essential links to your menu and you'll probably see your conversions rise as a result number 3 on the list is broken links now there's no seo penalty of for having broken links on your website that means if you have a few broken links where people go and can't find the information google's not going to punish you and reduce your rankings in the search results but it does have a huge penalty for user experience imagine you're trying to find something extremely important you go to a website and that's the one big link in front of you which says this is the exact solution to your problem and you click on it and then you see a 404 error it will be very frustrating and you probably won't return to the website so that's why fixing this problem is very important now over the course of time when you update your website your build website getting some broken links is common but not fixing it is the problem which you should be fixing in the first place So how do you find and fix broken links that two different ways. First you can use generic SEO plugins which do the job well even all in one SEO has a broken link checker but if you have a lot of content on your website then what you can run into is a problem of system resources because if these plugins scan your website consistently they are using system resources or your server's resources. So if you have a lot of content on your website then you should be paying attention to whether a lot of system resources are being dedicated to scanning broken links. And what I would suggest that if your website is getting some significant amount of traffic you should be optimizing your server resources for serving visitors not fixing these problems. So I'd suggest you take a look at All in One SEO's broken link checking service. The benefit of using this service is that the broken link checking does not happen on your site but off a different service altogether which saves your server's resources and preserves it for serving visitors. So regardless of the solution you go for fixing broken links on your site you should be first and definitely fixing the broken links on your site. Make sure to install the plugin right away after watching this video. Links are in the description. Let's go to the next one. The next thing to remove from your website is a bad search experience. I'm a huge fan of WordPress and I've been using WordPress for well over 10 years now and I've built tons of website with WordPress but the search experience on WordPress still leaves a lot to be desired and this becomes even truer if you're building a custom platform for a very specific use case for example you're building online courses with Thrive if you are building membership website with MemberPress or if you're building an online store with WooCommerce or if you're selling digital products with easy digital downloads The problem with WordPress search is that it might not be able to index or search for information contained in these plugins. So if you have a lot of membership content, people are interacting on your site, users or members might not be able to find the right information because it's a custom solution built on top. Now you can fix this very well or easily with Search WP. 
It's a fantastic plugin designed specifically to fix WordPress search. And all you have to do is download the plugin, install it on your website, and it'll allow you to customize this search engine on your website. You can add more attributes, what things you want Search WP to be able to search for, and remove attributes and also customize the weightage of individual attributes. So let's say if you have a product page on WordPress, you can remove the author attribute, which makes no sense here, and increase the weightage of the product description and other elements on the page, which will allow Search WPP to customize the weightage of the search terms. You can also enable fuzzy search, remove common words, and fix spelling mistakes automatically, which will completely change your WordPress search experience and make it a lot better. And trust me, your users are going to thank you, even if they don't realize that you're using Search WP in the backend. So links are in the description for Search WP if you want to check it out. The next thing you should be fixing on your website is a clashing color scheme. Now, if your website looks like that it was drawn in crayon by a 10 year old, then you need to update your website. And the competition to acquire customers is fierce in 2024 and it's gonna get even tougher as we move ahead. So what you should be doing is optimizing every single thing that hurts conversions. And poor looking websites usually have bad conversions. And the best thing is that you can just use a custom theme on WordPress and I've done many videos on the channel showing how to design beautiful looking websites. So just using a custom theme which has predefined good colors, good layouts, good elements can solve majority of your problems. And if you want to retain control over your website, your design it your own way but without understanding or having great design skills then you can be using a page builder on WordPress as well. For example, I would recommend using Seedprod which has predefined themes already so the color schemes and everything is designed for you and all you have to do is just get inside, just move things around, change stuff, a couple of things, maybe lay out things, change the fonts and then you'll have a professional looking website without having professional skills. And that's the best of both worlds, right? So make sure to check out links in the description for everything I mentioned and let's move on to the next thing. The next thing you should be removing from your website are bad forms. Now this has happened to me many, many times. I go to a website and I'm trying to report a problem with a product or a software. And hey, the best thing to do is include some screenshots so that someone can understand what the problem is. But voila, there's a contact form and I cannot share any images. And if I upload an image somewhere uh, to a random uploading website and then add a link, guess what? The links are also blocked. Now, how do I get the solution to my problem? And obviously it's a frustrating experience. And this happens constantly. Forms on most websites are broken and not optimized for user experience. But thankfully, the easiest thing to fix in the world is forms if you have the right tools in place. So what I would recommend is just go to WP Forms website, which I'm going to link in the description and install the WP Forms plugin. It's a fantastic form builder. So you can drag and drop things to arrange. And the best part is you can create new functionality, which is not present anywhere in WordPress. So you can have forms for file uploads. You can upload PDFs. You can have sliders, calculated fields. So users can just enter some information. Everything gets calculated. And then you have a beautiful looking form. And you can even customize the look and feel of the form with custom colors, predefined themes, etc. And it's a powerful solution that gives you everything that you need to build great forms. You can use it for support, you can use it for contact forms, you can use it for sales forms, everything else right inside WordPress. Go check it out. The next thing to remove from your website are bad testimonial pages. Now, I'm not saying remove testimonial pages. I'm saying remove bad testimonial pages. Of course, testimonials are important. Now, what most websites do is that they create a specific dedicated page for testimonials and post all their testimonials on that dedicated page. It's better than not having a testimonial page, but it's still on a great solution. Let me explain why. It's the equivalent of having a beautiful storefront and then having all your testimonials and social proof in a back room in a garage. It doesn't work like that. Testimonials can be great for conversions, but users are not going to seek out to look for testimonials when they're making a buying decision. So what you should be doing is sprinkling testimonials and social proof throughout your website. If you have an e-commerce website, then having the testimonials right on the page where the product is listed makes the most sense. But then why not the same thing for other businesses as well? So what you can do is use a plugin called TrustPulse to integrate social proof and testimonials on every single page of your website. All you have to do is install the plugin, configure a few settings, and then TrustPulse will get into action. It'll analyze the user behavior on a website, which pages are they visiting, what products are they purchasing, what are they doing, and use all that social proof or other people's interaction with your website and convert that into social proof. So if people purchase a product, it'll list it. If people are visiting a particular page, then it will list it. If people are visiting the page right now, that will list it. And by using the social proof and testimonials strategically, you can definitely increase the conversions on your website. 
And if you want to learn how to configure Trustpulse to work on your website, you should be watching this video right here. And you're watching Yuvraj from Double Beginner. I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.